watches. At one point in time, all of these things were considered really futuristic technologies. Right, but before you get too excited about how what we have now is the future of technology, just buckle up because there's some new stuff coming down the pipeline that's going to change what you think is possible. We're about to head off to Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario to show you what is brand new on the horizon. Here at the Human Media Lab, Professor Roel Vertigo and his students are planning a revolution. I consider myself, and, and, and I think the students consider themselves to be very lucky that we're witnessing the third display revolution. Roel and his students are working on giving computers a facelift. I have an iPhone here, and one of its interesting features is that it is absolutely flat. So anything that we represent on that is going to be flat as well. And when we look around the word Earth around us, and the world around us, we see that it isn't. If they can pull this off, this will be the next big step in the evolution of how computers are used. What that will mean is that the bulk of computer systems will be using flexible displays. Here we have a sphere. What can we do with it? And as we can see, the Earth is actually represented in this right now in mirror image. Imagine having Google Earth on a cylindrical or a spherical display like this. Um, so you could actually browse it and do pinch gestures in order to zoom in. Uh, you actually get the data in the form that it suits and that allows you a very different perspective. This display can go from being spherical to being flat to even being concave. It's malleable. You can actually stick your hands in there because it's made out of latex. So what we have here is a, is a brain scan and uh, maybe I'm a surgeon and I want to do some pre-operative planning and I want to be able to literally go into the brain and find the spot where I want to uh, operate. They're working on a spherical display. The spherical display is used to show uh, images that are uh, not flat, so 3D images. And on a cylindrical display. As we can see, a cylinder is a very, very useful shape for containing things. Um, it also is a very, very interesting shape from the point of view of uh, the human body, because the human body is essentially enveloped in a cylinder. So we decided to make a human telepresence system out of this. It's essentially a pod. Uh, a pod that looks into another space, so call it a portal if you want, uh, where there's another human being. And this other human being may be in Calgary or in New York or Tokyo. Roll wants you to forget that these things are actually technology. You don't think of a coffee cup or a, a knife and fork as a technology. And today, even Apple's products, they might be beautiful, but they are technologies. They are what we call devices. And we want to completely get rid of this notion of a device. So instead of sitting at your computer for video conferencing... So how's the project going that you were working on? You could be walking around the office or in the kitchen while carrying on a conversation. It's a more natural way to communicate. Well, the challenges with the cylindrical display are similar to those of the spherical display. The problem is that the light really drops off as you go down because a cylinder is, of course, uh, long, and that means that the further away you go, uh, the less light there is, the further away you go from the projector. And so that's one of the challenges we're, we're dealing with. Other than that, I think it's a beautiful interaction surface. It's even more beautiful than, um, than the sphere uh, because you can walk around it, but you can actually see almost like a flat image as you walk around it. And what could be more natural than something that is not stationary, something that moves with you? What I have in my wrist is called Snaplet. We are making use of the shape of the device to define the function of the device. In this case, there are three different functions it takes. Uh, right now, it's on my wrist, so it knows it's in a convex mode. It can detect that, and uh, it goes into a mode where it is like a wristwatch, or a media player, and or even a music player. When I take it off my wrist, which I can do that actually with this one, uh, it goes into a flat state, so it knows that and it acts like a notepad which I can write on. I can also pick up phone calls with this because I can make a concave shape here which is more comfortable when I'm picking up phone and talking with it. It's still in test mode. It's not portable now, but they're working on it. We can easily integrate these kinds of displays, for example, into clothing. Now what's interesting about clothing is that it changes shape and it changes shape for ergonomic purposes, so for functionality. And that's something that's really of key interest here. And flexible computers, well, they can be a lot of fun too. What we see here is a game called Tagurit, uh, which is a proximity sensing display on a shirt that allows you to play a game of tag, but with a twist. And the twist is that as you come closer, the shirt actually senses the chaser coming closer and switches the target 
which is this Goomba here, to another person. So it becomes really hard to actually catch the target. The game ends when you hit the shirt and touch the shirt uh, when the Goomba is displaying. Now in the future, what we're envisioning is that everybody will be wearing these shirts and you can text message to each other's shirt um, or you can display uh, you know, interesting statements about yourself very much like the rock and roll t-shirts we've been seeing since the 60s except you know, fully computerized but also potentially fully interactive. It's still a few years before it'll be your turn at being it. But thanks to this lab, you can certainly see how the future is shaping up. In the lab, we, we tend to work on technologies that are at least 10 years ahead of its time in terms of product. So I believe that these things will be popping up, say, within 5 to 10 years, as flexible display technologies become mass-produced 